What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to The Savvy Show. And in today's episode, I am really excited for this SCP animation because man, this has been in so many other animations and I've been waiting for just one single video just about this SCP and today we got that wish. This is SCP-006, Fountain of Youth. So I'm sure you guys, if you guys have been following the journey, we already, you know, known about this SCP. However, we didn't go so in depth about it because it wasn't the main topic of the story that this was featured in. So today, it's time man so with that being said if you guys are excited for this reaction please smash that like button for me it takes less than a second and it's 100 free and it will be helping me out a lot let's try to get at least 80 likes on this one guys i feel like this is going to be a banger man and also if you're not already part of the family smash that red button for me join the family if you love my content you like my reaction style this is going to be the best place to be to get your dose of scp heat and don't forget to hit that bell so you can always stay plugged for each and every upload and now without any further ado let's get this show started Alrighty, SCP-006, Fountain of Youth, let's go! Commander McGrath, one of the most influential members of Mobile Task Force Alpha-1, better known as the Red Right Hand, had been summoned by his masters for one of the most important missions masters. of his life. Jesus. It was so above top secret, even he would likely need to undergo amnestic treatment once he'd seen the job through. Sheesh. It comes with the territory when you're dealing with SCP-006. The Red Right Hand is no ordinary Mobile Task Force either. They were the personal enforcers of the O5 Council, the 13 most powerful members of the SCP Foundation, and by extension, some of the most powerful human beings on Earth. We know them far too well. McGrath stood before the assembled council, trying to suppress the tremors of fear and awe <laughs> running through him. He'd gone toe to toe with SCP 076 Abel, one of the finest humanoid warriors ever known, during one of his many containment breaches. He led strike forces after a fleeing SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile, after it escaped its acid tank and began charging towards the nearest populated area intent on causing mass death. Sheesh. He'd personally taken out more people than you've probably ever met, all at the behest of his Foundation's superiors. And yet standing right here before them, he couldn't help feel a twinge of deep terror. Yo, it was his first time seeing him, man. It was like staring right into the face of God and waiting for it to blink. <laughs> With his well-honed military observation skills, he noted that O5-2 wasn't among the council this time, hmm. but he knew better than to ask why. He yeah, was employed <laughs> to take orders, not to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And Know this your time, his orders were something special. He wasn't given any more information than this. McGrath, we need you to lead an elite team to Astrakhan in Russia on the double. Procedure 006 is now in effect. You know what to do. McGrath nodded. He'd been prepared for this day. His predecessor, Commander Richards, had only needed to enact Procedure 006 once in his long and storied career with the red right hand. It was truly a once-in-a-lifetime assignment. And now the torch had been passed to him. The only question was whether he'd be up to the task. But McGrath didn't have time to ponder on this question. Time was of the essence. First he needed to assemble a team, small but focused. Loyal men who'd keep their heads down, complete the mission, and take the forbidden knowledge no further than the bounds of said mission. I wonder in this canon for this SCP universe, the O5 council members are not immortal yet. Are they trying to get the Fountain of Youth to achieve that? McGrath selected three operatives, Bennett, DiMaggio, and Stewart, Let's go. all of whom had proven valuable assets in prior missions. They would be the ones to accompany him on this most valuable and secretive of directives, Procedure 006. Only four people. Before they could execute the mission itself, they needed to be trained, briefed, and fitted with the proper equipment. For a mission this sensitive, and dealing with an anomaly as deadly as SCP-006, they needed Deadly? to wear modified Class 6 B and C suits. Deadly? These are the ultimate total exclusion hazmat suits, designed specifically by the SCP Foundation. They offered such a degree of protection that they made regular hazmat suits look like bikinis. <laughs> Commander McGrath actually knew very little about SCP-006 and how it worked. Like many of the more top secret anomalies contained by the Foundation, only the O5 Council understood the full scope of it. Everyone below them were only told the specific fragments of information they needed to do Damn. their job. After all, filling your head with the wrong kinds of knowledge can get your memory wiped, 
or worse at the SCP Foundation. <laughs> SCP-006, as far as Commander McGrath knew, was the more traditional kind of toxic. He'd been briefed using the SCP-006-B info it, pack, a heavily redacted description of SCP-006. Safe class, liquid in nature, but one of the most toxic substances known to man. It made mercury and uranium look like a glass of mineral water, and more dangerous still. If someone came into contact with even the tiniest quantity of SCP-006's liquids, they would not only be marked for certain death, they would also become a vector for transmission. Wait, a what? veritable plague rat. A walking danger to all mankind. So it's not the Fountain of Youth? I'm getting kind of confused now. <laughs> I thought it was legit the Fountain of Youth where it does the opposite. You live forever. What the heck? That's why the Class 6 BNC suits I'm getting confused. to be tested. What the heck? McGrath, Bennett, DiMaggio, and Stewart suited up in a secure Foundation training facility and fully submerged themselves in a training pool. This was how they made sure that there were no vulnerabilities in the suits. If any bubbles were generated, it meant there was a leak. And if there was a leak, then the person wearing the defective suit was as good as dead when they reached the real 006. Wow, so this is not even the real version of it. Okay, maybe the real, real version of it will be different from, you know, this bootleg one, generic one, head ass. Lucky for them, no leaks. They were ready to proceed to the next stage of the mission, making their way to Astrakhan, Russia, where SCP-006 was contained. The pressure was on, with the council growing more impatient by the moment, so they needed to make the journey immediately. Alrighty. Every minute counted. And Commander the McGrath hunger was for that mortality. aware of the time slipping away. <laughs> though he couldn't possibly fathom why they Oops. need a toxic chemical like this with such urgency. They made their journey in a covert cargo plane. It was beyond important to keep all Foundation activity around SCP-006 under wraps. A number of groups of interest cells were active in the area, including the Church of the Broken God and the Serpent's Hand. Dang, just lurking. And if ever the dreaded chaos insurgency caught wind of SCP-006's existence and triangulated its location, the damage it could do would be unprecedented. That's why nobody but the O5 Council could truly be trusted with this almost sacred knowledge. Nice. When they touched down in Astrakhan, they met with a Foundation courier who would take them on the final leg of their journey to the Foundation site roughly 60 kilometers west of the town. McGrath and his team had no idea what they were headed towards, or the insane history of the land they traversed, Damn. all because no idea. of SCP-006. The Foundation had first become aware of the anomaly back during the 19th century, but were unable to gain control of it until 1991 due to it Sheesh. being fiercely guarded by a procession of territorial Russian rulers. Oh, that makes the sense. blood of hundreds of thousands had been spilled on this land in the historic wars and conflicts over SCP-006. My god. So many had wasted their entire lives unsuccessfully trying to find it. During the several hour car trip to the site, Commander McGrath had no idea of the true value of the anomaly he and his small team were heading towards. But he would in time, Alrighty. though an innocent would have to die first. The courier dropped the four operatives Sacrifice? off outside an abandoned chemical plant in the sticks, far from what anyone would call civilization. It was the kind of industrial decay you could expect in the badlands of rural Russia, a huge complex weathered and broken by time. But what the untrained observer wouldn't realize is that the plant was actually full of heavily trained and even more heavily Jesus. armed Foundation security personnel. Oh my God. As McGrath's team I approached the building, swole. they had no less than eight sniper rifles pointed at them from various vantage points within the plant, <laughs> just to be safe. Jesus! The Foundation couldn't afford to take any chances they with playing games. They arrived at the gate and provided their clearance credentials. Oh my god. They were envoys, here on behalf of the O5 Council themselves. Showed them a picture. And if they were wow. allowed to complete their mission, then the 006 personnel would have the death of a council member on their hands. With that, the yep, team was given a free away. pass into the site, under close observation. Anyone seeking to interface SCP-006 was forced to do so under almost microscopic scrutiny. Even when inside the building, McGrath and his men needed to pass multiple secure checkpoints throughout the halls, Jeez. each time restating their security credentials. <laughs> Eventually, they reached a different section of the building, Foreboding anomalous hallways gave way to what seemed like a mix of a garden and a jungle, but the plants were 
different. The trees, the shrubs, even the weeds were unlike anything members of the team had ever seen before. It was like stepping into an alien world, or perhaps this world, but as it was a few million years prior, it was terrifying and wondrous. They suited up in their Class 6 BNC suits, fearing airborne contaminants from SCP-006 before proceeding further. They walked through this new jungle, being watched Alrighty. at every turn by security cameras and personnel posted throughout this overgrown portion of the facility. It didn't take mission. long for what them the to reach their destination. Let's the legendary it. SCP-006. A small natural spring jutting out of a rock, surrounded by rich emerald grass. Wait, so that is the actual version. There's no version behind this one of the real SCP-006. That's the case, why did they allude to this not being the real SCP-006? I'm actually legit kind of confused. It looked more like a nice place to have a picnic than a dangerous and highly secretive anomaly, but McGrath wasn't paid to question things, only to carry out procedure 006. The only object they had with them was the quad sealant container, an ultra-secure liquid containment unit specifically designed for safely transporting samples of SCP-006's water between sites. Why though? It will kill you. It's not like the fountain of youth that we knew it would be, that we thought it would be. Unless it's cat, <laughs> and it actually does the opposite. The team members descended into the spring and began filling up the container. It was nerve-wracking, knowing the stakes of their mission and knowing that they were submerged in such a deadly substance. But they had a job to do, and they were going to do it, come hell or high water. They filled high the water. containment no unit, pun intended. but sadly for McGrath and his team, the mission wouldn't be entirely without casualty. A single bubble uh -oh. rose from the leg of Stewart's suit. He was a good MTF operative, but the youngest and least experienced member of the team. Yo. His suit must have somehow been damaged during transit and now he was compromised. He shared a haunting glance with McGrath and his fellow team members, knowing that his part of the mission and his life was about to come to a swift and violent end. Alarms rang out How about you get the, the hell facility. out of it? Why is he just chilling in the water? Maybe he has time to save himself? I don't know, it might not be as severe. If he jumps out now, he's just chilling there in shock and they're not even trying to do anything. A huge team of armed operatives all wearing class six BNC suits charged into the room. Stewart was grabbed and manhandled out of the 006 spring, while his fellow team members sealed the containment unit and continued their mission. Dang. There was no time to stop, rest, or mourn. Completing the mission was the absolute priority. If Sheesh. McGrath understood the protocol as well as he thought he did, Stewart would be dragged into a secure room by the site staff and locked in with a blast door. He would look down and notice the floor below him was a metal grate caked with ash. His last thoughts as the incinerator launches its flames into action would strangely be the Dang. fact that he was feeling the healthiest he'd been in years. But that wouldn't stop the sudden furnace around him from decimating his body and leaving little more than ash and charred bones. Wait, so it did work? It is a fountain of youth? He just said he felt the healthiest he ever been, so what the heck? So just maybe a little ounce of the water. Oh, so maybe too much of the actual liquid from the freaking fountain or the stream or river will be fatal. Like if you just take a drop of it, then that's all you need. But too much of it, you know, it could go bad. Like too much of a good thing is bad. Okay, now that makes sense if that's the case. Over a decade of loyal MTF service ended in an instant. Stewart would have been terminated. According to orders from the top, it was all that could be done for those afflicted by SCP-006. A mercy, really, if they were to be believed. And also, say that worked, like he actually got immortality, doesn't mean that he's invulnerable because he ended up dying. <laughs> you know, so th these, so even if you drink from the fountain, yes, you possibly could live forever or your life could be extended, but you'll still succumb to death though, if it happens to fall on your head. McGrath and his team soldiered on. After retrieving the sample, they were hurried back into their inception point one of the many classified bases occupied by the O5 Council members. While DiMaggio and Bennett were ushered off to be given amnestic treatment, McGrath would personally get to see the containment unit and its precious cargo make the final leg of the journey. Nice. He was going to be granted access to O5-2, the person this had all been in service of. Alrighty. Commander McGrath approached the secure quarters of the Council member, escorted by a bevy of heavily armed security personnel. Why they got a gun on his back? Like, open, damn. And he saw her there. Back away from me. Two, bedridden, laying at the center of a grand web of life-saving technology. She Let's was beyond it. old and decrepit, 
Commander McGrath could see the centuries she'd endured written deeply in the wrinkles and scars of her ancient face. She didn't look like one of the most powerful people in the world. She looked like one of the most feeble. Her eyes lit up when McGrath entered the room holding the containment unit. She beckoned him closer, until he was close enough for her to take the containment unit from him with scarred, trembling hands. McGrath watched in horror as she disengaged the lid and swigged down the entirety of its contents. But wasn't the water toxic? He thought. McGrath had been fed the same lie as everybody else. The Foundation didn't keep 006 such a well-guarded secret because it was capable of bringing death. Quite the opposite, in fact. All Commander McGrath could do was I'm not stare confused anymore. awestruck <laughs> as the years seemed to fall from 05-2's face. Dang. Decades and decades and decades. Scars faded. Wrinkles disappeared. Little by little, 05-2 began to sit and then stand. By the time she was straightening her clothes, she looked like a healthy woman in her mid-forties. It was a complete and total transformation. So you age backwards too. It's not just you have immortality at the age that you drink the liquid. Bro, that's kind of crazy. The liquid of SCP-006 has a plethora of benefits to human subjects. The ability to regenerate damaged DNA by heightened excitement of cellular duplication and producing a frightening increase in the effectiveness of the human immune system. Even upon testing the liquid on animal subjects, Hostile bacteria and viral agents were destroyed immediately. Members of mm. the O5 Council are experts at cheating death. And SCP-006 is just another ace hidden up their sleeve oh in the endless battle against the Reaper. A secret so well guarded that they're willing to terminate even their most loyal servants to keep it safe. That sucks. After all, if everyone knew about it, everyone would want it. And the O5 Council are very invested in exclusivity. But they should have figured out the lie wasn't true. Like, the dude that got incinerated. He was still able to move and walk around and he felt fine. Like, wouldn't everyone else see, like, yo, something's not adding up. Shouldn't he be, like, on death's door? Why is he just looking lively like this, you know? Oh, no. Never normally one to rise above his station, Commander McGrath couldn't help blurt out, But if it was all a lie, Private Stewart is perfectly alive. All smoke and mirrors, you see. And like everyone who works a 006 mission, he won't remember a thing. Wait, what? Good work, Commander McGrath. 05 2, now in perfect health, replied. Now return to your post after a visit to our boys in Amnestics. There's still plenty to be done. He's actually he alive? Afford to dilly dally. After all, you're not getting any younger. Now go check. No way, he, he's not alive. They wouldn't let him be alive because he has immortality. And he's gonna figure something out. Like even if you give him amnestics, something's gonna be up. He's gonna feel what, decades younger? He's not gonna be aging what? Like, come on. Something might catch up to him, but who knows? But with that being said, this was a cool, <laughs> this was a cool animation. It kept me guessing because they fooled me, man. I thought it was legit when they were saying it's toxic. I was like, yo, is this the same SCP that I've been aware about? But yo, this was cool, man. If you guys enjoyed it as well too, please remember to smash that like button also smash the sub button and hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload and let me know in the comment section below if you guys are kind of bamboozled like i was if not you guys could just make fun of me then in the comment section i don't mind i don't discriminate <laughs> i just laugh at it but yo with that being said that concludes today's episode however i'll catch you guys on the next one mm -hmm.